finally it is time to ask ourselves if a Taylor series is actually equal to the original function. Uh, we're going to look at a single example. We're going to use cosine for our example and the base point will be zero. So we want to know is cosine, the function f of x, equal to the Taylor series that comes from that function? So I've written here the Taylor series for cosine. Well, think about how we can phrase this in terms of the Taylor polynomials. So if we look at the difference between a Taylor polynomial and the original function, if these are equal, then as n goes to infinity, this error should go to 0. Right, if this if these two things are equal, then the difference between the nth Taylor polynomial and the function should get smaller because then when you take the limit, the Taylor, the Taylor polynomial turns into the Taylor series and the error turns into zero. And that would mean the Taylor series is equal to the original function. Well, this is not always the case, so let's see if it's true for this particular function. Uh, you can see, since we're asking about the error in the nth Taylor polynomial, we're going to have to use our Taylor polynomial error bound. Since we are using the Taylor polynomial error bound, we need to find m. So let's do that ahead of time. Also, uh, our order here, n, we're going to take a limit as n goes to infinity, ultimately. So we have to keep n as a variable. We can't just choose a, a value for n. All right, so to choose m, we need to figure out how big does the n plus first derivative of f get. This should be a t. So remember, we need to choose some number that goes in here so that the n plus first derivative of our function never gets bigger than that in absolute value. Well, our function is cosine. And when you start taking derivatives of cosine, what do you get? Well, sometimes you get cosine. Sometimes you get sine. And sometimes you get a sine or cosine with a minus sign in front. So the only possibilities for this derivative here is plus or minus, sine or cosine. And what is the biggest in absolute value that any of these get? Well, one. Sine and cosine never get bigger than one in absolute value. So we can choose one for the value of m. Sine and cosine are really nice to work with with the Taylor error bound because you can always choose m equals 1. It doesn't matter what x is. It doesn't matter what the order is. You can always choose 1. All right, so now that we know m, let's write this error bound. So the error in the nth Taylor polynomial at x, that's the difference between the Taylor polynomial and the function, is less than or equal to m, which is 1, over the n plus first, sorry, n plus one factorial times x minus the base point, but the base point is zero, so x minus zero to the n plus one. So we get this. And remember, we were going to take the limit of this as n goes to infinity. So now let's take our limit. Uh, notice that this absolute value, it's always positive, so this limit is definitely greater than or equal to zero. The only question is, is it positive or is it actually zero? Remember, we are hoping it's zero. So since we took the limit on the left-hand side of the inequality, we need to take the limit on the right-hand side of the inequality. And you can see we're kind of set up for a squeeze theorem thing. If we can show that this right-hand limit is equal to zero, then the error also goes to zero. So let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. All right. So limit as n goes to infinity of. 
Well, this, this enormous fraction, look at its numerator. It's absolute value of x times absolute value of x times absolute value of x, and so on. Lots and lots of copies of absolute value of x. In the denominator, we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 and so on out to n plus 1. Well, when n is really big, when n is much, much larger than the absolute value of x, most of these pieces, absolute value of x over n plus, n plus 1 and the one right before it, most of these fractions are very small. And you can make them even smaller by letting n get even larger. So, you know, adding more, making n larger just multiplies this whole mess by even smaller numbers. So this is obviously going to 0, no question. So look at, let's have a look at what we've done. Our error, the limit of our error, is between 0 and 0. So that means, by the squeeze theorem, the limit as n goes to infinity of the error in the nth Taylor polynomial is 0. But that means that the Taylor series, which for cosine is the sum from j equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the j over 2j factorial times x to the 2j is actually equal to cosine of x wherever this series converges, but that series converges for all x. So this crazy series is actually equal to cosine. Now, not every function is equal to its Taylor series, but many nice functions are. In fact, all the good functions are equal to their Taylor series. So let me write some functions equal to their Taylor series. It turns out the big four are all equal to their Taylor series. So e to the x is equal to its Taylor series, which is the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times x to the k. Cosine of x is equal to its Taylor series, which I just wrote down, so I won't write it again. Sine of x is equal to its Taylor series, which is the sum from uh, k equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the, oh, sorry, I've been using j here, sum from j equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the j over 2j plus 1 factorial times x to the 2j plus 1, and 1 over 1 minus x is equal to its Taylor polynomial based at 0. All of these are based at 0. And that's sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k. Now you, you do need to remember where each of these converges. So for e to the x, this is for all values of x. For cosine, we checked using the ratio test that this converges for all values of x. For sine, this was also for all values of x. But for 1 over 1 minus x, this is equal to its Taylor series only when the absolute value of x is less than 1. Most nice functions that you can write down actually are equal to their Taylor series wherever their Taylor series converge.